Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crowley. I'm back with another video. Today I'm doing a special thank you video uh, in honor of having reached 3 million subscribers. My jaw is on the ground. I just can't believe uh, that I reached this milestone thanks to the support of people like you watching this video right now. And I've done a little drawing for the first time of my character Old Man Time Lapse. Is he a character or just a goofy voice that I do? Uh, I uh, have had a lot of requests over the years to draw Old Man Time Lapse, and for whatever reason I never did until today. So let's go ahead and get into it. I'm going to be inking uh, this illustration as uh, I recount six different things uh, that I have learned from being on YouTube. Uh, and I'll go ahead and grab the first one right now. Number one, the viewers of my videos have given to me at least as much as I've given to them. Massive support in every sense of the word. And that's why I wanted to just focus on the word thank you here. I sort of briefly considered writing three million or some sort of self-congratulatory thing. And I said, no, I'm just going to focus on the word thank you because that's really what I owe uh, to you, the viewers. And I, I stumbled into YouTube back in... Uh, 2007, we're coming up on the what would be the 12th uh, year anniversary of me doing YouTube videos, and I was just lucky. I got in there early. Uh, I was not the first person to do how to draw videos. There were a, a number of people doing them, but I suppose I was the first one that was um, a published uh, uh, illustrator and author. I don't know what it was that set me apart, but... Um, uh, little by little, I, I got this sort of toehold that uh, built uh, into uh, quite a big following. And uh, I'll never forget reaching, you know, even just like uh, uh, 100 subscribers was amazing to me. And then it continued on until uh, some years ago I reached 1 million and then 2 million. And finally, here we are at 3 million. It's just... Uh, a mind-boggling uh, number of subscribers, and uh, as I said in my first little uh, point there, I feel like the subscribers, the people, the viewers, uh, have given to me at least as much as I've ever given to any of you. Uh, they've supported me, they've bought my books, uh, and they've left such uh, wonderful comments, you know, here on YouTube and also on my uh, Twitter, uh, Instagram, and Facebook, almost every day it seems like I see uh, some heartfelt uh, comment from someone who's uh, telling me what the videos have meant to them, and, uh, how I was maybe the first person that inspired them to either start drawing uh, or start trying to make videos of their own. And uh, yeah, it's, it's humbling, it really is, because um, I didn't have a plan. <laughs> I just started making videos, and, and before I knew it, I found myself in this wonderful position of being a, a kind of a long-distance mentor uh, to a lot of people, and, and that's why really the focus of my channel has always been about sharing uh, knowledge. And speaking of that, I'm going to go ahead and move on to my second little point here. You don't have to be perfect or to know everything. Just share whatever you know, and it will help people. Um, I think it can be kind of intimidating to be on um, uh, full view as you uh, make illustrations uh, uh, for educational purposes. And you maybe, you know, if you're like just starting out, you might be scared of like, man, what if I make a mistake? Uh, what if the proportions are off or whatever? Um, my feeling is, you know, you're going to be paralyzed if you if you worry about that too much. Just go ahead and jump in and start sharing what you know. Uh, heaven knows I've got some videos in my back catalog that uh, are far from perfect, that uh, show illustrations that um, some people might be embarrassed uh, to call their own, frankly. But uh, the, the important thing is we all have some uh, knowledge that other people don't have. And um, if you keep it all to yourself, uh, you're in a way doing a disservice. Uh, it's all, it seems to me almost an obligation for those of you who have learned something, who've figured something out, pass it on. Pass it on to somebody else. Because um, my knowledge is built on people having uh, passed their knowledge on to me. You know, there, there was no YouTube back when I was first starting out, but um, I had teachers and 
uh, that taught me what they knew, and uh, that's what it's all about. So don't worry about being perfect. Don't worry about being, um, you know, a hundred percent knowledgeable uh, on the subject you're teaching. <laughs> One of the things on my channel is that I'm always not knowing the word for things, right? And people say, "How can you not know the word for that? You're supposed to be the expert." You know, well, I'm not really an expert. And if we all waited until we were experts to start making videos, there probably would be no videos, or there would be very, very few indeed. So that's, uh, I suppose that almost qualifies as a, a bit of advice for um, prospective YouTube creators. Um, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring in old man time lapse. It's about time my fans have been waiting. Uh, and he's going to help me finish the inking process. Then maybe I'll move on to number uh, three and four as I begin to add color. All right, well, I decided to go ahead and color in uh, this with marker. I figured that would not be so interesting to watch real time, but let's go ahead and move on to number three here. Uh, having to come up with new video ideas every week is good for an artist. It keeps you on your toes creatively. Um, so yeah, you know, in the early days uh, when I started out, I didn't really commit myself um, to necessarily doing one video every week. Somewhere around the third year, seems like to me. Uh, I made this pledge of uh, new video every Friday. And um, yeah, it really, I think, was good for me uh, creatively to, to get on a schedule like that and have to keep coming up with new ideas. You know, you can't, uh, just for your own sanity, you can't just keep doing the exact same type of video uh, over and over again. But definitely, um, for the sake of your viewers, you got to change it up and try new things um, or they will understandably uh, lose interest in what you're doing. So um, it's been very good for me and a lot of the ideas that I came up with for YouTube videos ended up becoming books like the Realism Challenge, uh, for example, which really was uh, initially created mainly as a video idea just because I thought it would be interesting to watch someone sort of competing with uh, reality in a way. Can you can you illustrate the object while the object is still right there in frame? You know, that was kind of the, the whole challenge behind that. And then, uh, what do you know, I was able to turn it into a book. And indeed, it's, it became the one uh, book out of all the ones that I've done that has been published in Japan. Uh, and I never could have predicted that. So um, it comes back to, to that requirement of coming up with new ideas that was... Um, brought about by way of this YouTube schedule. Um, so yeah, it's uh, sure, you know, it can sometimes seem like a, a burden, I suppose, to like, oh man, I gotta come up with another one. Um, but I think it's been very good for me. And I have no regrets uh, in that regard. Let's move on to uh, number four here. You've gotta be yourself. The humanity of uh, YouTube, the mistakes, and spontaneous random comments is what makes it such an appealing new medium. Um, and again, I suppose this one falls into the category of a bit of advice, but I, it came from my own experience. Um, I found that people responded to the fact that it, nothing I ever do is scripted. Uh, and that is that has been true from the start, and I have never, ever written down you know, apart from these little squares that I show you, uh, I never am uh, reading from anything. I'm always just saying what pops into my mind uh, as I talk to you. And, and you can hear it in someone's voice when they are speaking spontaneously versus uh, sort of reading a prepared statement. And I don't know about you, but um, I do not enjoy hearing someone read a prepared statement. It... Um, it's very stifling somehow, and uh, my brain starts to shut down uh, compared to hearing a conversation or hearing someone just speak off the top of their head. There's something to that. Um, and just more generally in terms of being yourself, I suppose some people on YouTube uh, putting on a persona is part of what they do, and that's a different thing. Um, but if you... Um, 
if you are sort of um, tweaking your own personality uh, to be more entertaining uh, or to sort of uh, tap into something that you perceive as popular on YouTube, um, I don't think that's going to get you very far. People have pretty good BS detectors, and they can tell when someone's not being real, you know. And uh, as I said before, there's the there's this appeal, and that's what makes YouTube different, you know. I remember watching my uh, son uh, when we used to have cable TV, and um, there would be something on TV like iCarly, you know, and something that had a lot of money behind it and professionals. And I would look over at my son, and he was watching YouTube instead of watching this professionally made thing. And the thing that he was watching on YouTube was some kid in their bedroom uh, just sort of making funny comments. And I loved that. I was like, look at this. This kid in their bedroom is beating out iCarly in terms of grabbing my kid's attention. Um, and that's, the, that's one of the cool things about YouTube that I think doesn't get really talked about enough uh, is, is this sort of level playing field. Anyway, I'm going to keep gabbing on forever, <laughs> if, if you let me. But let me go ahead and bring Old Man Time Labs back again for the second time. I just wanted, uh, for the record, uh, and I'm going to add a further color, get a little closer to the end of this before I read my fifth and sixth uh, final uh, bits of, what are they? Things I've learned from YouTube. Okay, well, we're getting closer uh, to a finished illustration here, and it is time to move on to number five, and that one is this. The YouTube art community is possibly the most positive and kind-hearted group of people on the whole website. Those of you who view a lot of different uh, art YouTubers, I'm sure you'll agree it's, uh, you know, YouTube is famous, or infamous, I suppose I should say, for... Uh, the comment section and how negative it can get, and um, viciously negative. And uh, I couldn't help noticing that the uh, latest um, uh, Wreck-It Ralph movie, Ralph Breaks the Internet, has this section in a quite heartfelt way showing what it feels like to read the comment section. Uh, and it's like one of the saddest <laughs> points of the movie because of how mean-spirited comments can be. Well, that does not really apply, I don't think, to the... Uh, art community, insofar as I have experienced it, people very positive, uplifting. Sure, there's some negative comments, there's bound to be. Uh, but they are out outnumbered um, by the kind-hearted and warm supporting. And, you know, there's not even this sort of negative competitiveness um, among YouTubers. When I reached uh, 3 million um, uh, subscribers the other day, I was congratulated on Twitter by um, Bailey J and Jazza and so many of the other great YouTubers and we instead of viewing each other as competitors we sort of see each other as friends and uh, that's a wonderful thing uh, and uh, it's not true of all the different communities uh, for sure so I feel lucky that I stumbled into one of the best <laughs> of all the different uh, YouTube communities I could possibly have joined well uh, let's move on now to the sixth and final little uh, thing that I learned from being on YouTube. It's not the number of people you're reaching that's important, it's what you give to them once you've reached them. Um, I don't talk about uh, this kind of thing on my videos and uh, probably won't ever talk about it again, but uh, there is this aspect of numbers, you know, with the internet. The number of subscribers, the number of views, the number of likes, uh, and I do fear that we are beginning to quantify, you know, popularity and uh, almost a feeling of sense, a, a, a sense of self-worth based on these numbers. Uh, and, you know, those numbers can go up and they can come down. And uh, if you have built your uh, sense of self-worth about around them, you are going to be seriously bummed out when those numbers go uh, down. And the truth is you have no control 
uh, over those numbers. Uh, there's an algorithm, there's just uh, thousands of people out there making decisions that are beyond your control. You cannot uh, become popular by way of effort alone. Uh, should that should that even be your goal? You know, <laughs> I want to become popular. You know, it's not it's not a very um, noble goal, is it? Uh, and so that's why I wanted to end with this final note about you know it's not the numbers. It's um, you're reaching people, and there's a, if you are communicating something positive and something that's helping, um, even if you just reach one person, you may reach them in a really deep way. Uh, that leads them to make decisions and do different things and, and make use of the information that you gave them um, that they would not have uh, gotten otherwise. And um, I think that's probably as good as any of a note to end this video on. I do want to say just one more time, thank you so much for uh, watching this video, for um, supporting me any way that you have, uh, even if this is the first one of my videos that you've ever watched, I want to thank you as well uh, for watching it. It, it, it all just um, touches me that people have shown this level of interest in what I do. And uh, I suppose it is time now for me to lay down this pencil. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And I'll be back with another one real soon.